they're making it seem like this thing's like the second coming and literally they just changed the name and probably a color scheme. It's like, okay, yeah. you guys didn't do anything too major. I saw Tyson List like, oh, they're a brand new reopening. looks so nice. I'm like, someone had put, uh, I know who Welcome out. to the tr- hotel word, where we talk about all hotel changes. We literally just talked about the title of one, hmm? and there were zero changes made after that. Yeah, it doesn't matter, but we're talking about some more. Nice sheets, huh? Welcome to the F Word, everybody. The best podcast you'll never know. I'm your host, G, and with me is Vass and Anthony. Show Hello. Wow. Oh, you're you're so close almost. to doing it. <laughs> hope everyone's having a good time wherever you're listening this to. I hope your drive's doing good. I hope you're staying warm, because... It was warm today, but it's been fucking it's weird. freezing all week. It's mm. been like really weird because like I go outside today and I'm like, it's November. Like, mm. what is going on? Mm-hmm. But, what is going no, on? Canada weather is just, I don't know. I just, it's stupid. It's so, yeah. Because is it going to be colder now that it's been warmer longer? Like, is it going to be colder longer just because mm. it's been like nicer longer? Is that like the trade off or is it like. Listen, man, climate is climate, weather is weather. So the weather is going to change like eight times till Sunday. And then the, but the climate itself is just going to remain the same. We just have to deal with it. I just found out that I can't put a starter in my vehicle. So that sucks. That's unfortunate. Very unfortunate. So it's going to be my first winter ever in, I don't know how many years, at least 13 or so without a starter. Not looking forward to it. I just got a car with a starter. It's very nice. Like a newer vehicle. You're not driving your old? No, because like. Yeah, it was really stupid the way they told me I was getting a new car because uh-huh. I just came from work and I was really tired, right? Because it was like 11 o'clock because I work at the movie theater. And my parents are all sitting there with my brother and my brother starts off like, we got to talk about how shitty of a driver you are. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, what is it? Like, off the, <laughs> like no, hi, Anthony. No, like, just off the bat. As soon as I open the door, just attacked by like everybody. Mm. I'm like, okay. And I start getting mad, right? I'm like, what, what is the point of this conversation? Like, what do you do? Like, I'm not going to get here and like sit here and get mm. yelled at for no reason. I my can't mom's sit like, here and take this. Yeah. Well, my mom's like, uh, yeah, your car, we're uh, getting rid of it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. So uh, you're going to be driving Michael's car. And I'm like, are we going to be sharing? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, well, I don't want to share a fucking car. That's stupid. Because like my car, the old Mobile Cutlass Supreme, for those who don't know, is a piece of shit that leaks oil and has a brake line hanging. Among That's all fine. other things. But it was my piece of shit. And well, I could drive it at least. It was your grandfather's yeah, piece of shit. Yeah, but you know, whatever. It was dual ownership not really he did a lot but so then they tell me that nick would be giving michael a sports car till he got a new car afterwards like he's letting him borrow his mitsubishi well no that was it's done now he has a new car nick no, no my michael so oh, get back yeah, the whatever it was called his first sports eclipse. car yeah the eclipse yeah, yeah the yeah. eclipse that's yeah. a Mitsub- yeah it's mitsubishi eclipse we have to drive that thing back on the ring road like the day before everything started melting and getting nicer so michael mm. was driving like and the thing is very uh like front heavy, so the back was just sliding on the ring road, just like back and no forth. No winter tires yet? Yeah, no. <laughs> and then Nick just said he was going to drive it around the corner and leave it at a condo right by our house. Oh, yeah. As soon as we made it. Awkward. But yeah, I don't know how I started, but I got a new car, and well, it's that's nice. that's exciting. Like, a, it's not new, newer but it's like, to yeah, you. yeah, newer to me. Yeah. Yeah. With a working heater, which is all I care yeah. about. That's I didn't deal. put a starter in mine, but can I went. Can you I, because yours is Oh, a I can. Yeah. Absolutely, I can. You're no, British. it's Japanese, actually. Oh. Yeah. I can. board. I can. It's just I spent the money on like you know rims, yeah. tires, and well, it's not necessary. And, uh, it's a nice a, de- a double din deck. So that's... yeah, he's looking to uh, really up his game for yeah. when he faces Toretto off for Absolutely. pink slips. Absolutely, three weeks Always. later. Um, yeah, no, I, my my vehicle. I have a battery issue. Um, again, so y- y- the average car when you when they test your battery, they they test it in mail amps, and mine's supposed to be, or most vehicles are supposed to be at like. 15 or so mil battery no i got one last year you gotta wait for the story to finish okay god so i went to go put my starter in because my buddy does those things and i had the original one from last year because the mechanics were like oh you this is the reason why your battery is completely drained turns out something in my vehicle is drawing 120 milliamps with like on its own you see it's supposed to be 15 
Yeah. Oh my god. So, Jesus. but okay. So to put it into context, a trunk light when we open up the trunk light, it shot up to four hundred from one hundred. So there's like a three hundred and something just the trunk light itself. Just again, any lights. That's why if you leave your lights on overnight, it just drains your battery. We pulled out every single fuse. This would like there's companies in the city that would charge me three hundred dollars to do what we did there. So we were there an hour and a half. We pulled out every individual fuse that the fucking car has. There was not a single um, change in that 100 or so. And with the starter, it pumps it up to 150 from the 130. Or no, 170, 180 from 150. Anyways, mm. it increases it. So when I don't drive it and I don't have, like, it doesn't get the drive time, it doesn't get the RPM range, it'll just start depleting that battery until I do. But if I only have a short reservoir because it's been drawing too much, like last year I had it list sitting for like a week until I drove it, that was enough to drain the whole thing. So when I tried to start it again, it had no juice. So it, long story short, I can't put a start in my car. I hate cars. I just do. Like in general, it's just, they're so annoying. No, they're cars very are useful, great. Yeah. but like just all the problems, like, I but don't you know, had a, You Dealing had an, like SGI and shit like that. It's just such a pain in the ass. Dude, you had, you have like a, one of the oldest cars. What is it? Like a 76? Well, it was no. 97 is a 90. Yeah. No, it was in the Your old mobile is a yeah, 90? 97. <laughs> Cutlass oh, Supreme, inverse. 97. <laughs> the inverse. <laughs> well, I was, no, I didn't think it was 97 either. That's Either way, I think the, the golden rule, uh, or at least a mechanic told me the golden rule is um, every when your car reaches a certain point, just budget a $1,500 cost every single year. Yeah. Like I spent 17 on mine this year. But, you know, if I, uh, if I really put in... Um, if I really put in the effort and I and I go and talk to the right people about it, specifically Conexus, I can save enough money to buy myself a brand new vehicle. All I got to do is hit that hashtag Conexus Money Talk or go to ConexusMoneyTalk.ca, and uh, I could really get uh, get in on that uh, that new car thing. You know, they can put me on a plan. They can help me save for the future today and it so happens that they are a sponsor of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network which we are a part of I think that was the smoothest transition I've done was it pre-planned sure. nope okay I didn't I even know we were you. talking about cars and then on the fly this is the thing I keep trying to tell you guys about like we, we got to work this like an improv class see this is what's happening but you're the only one who ever does the ads it's no 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 not not the ads in oh, general okay. I'm just talking about overall okay. so in improv, which I've never done before, yes there's a, and the yes and you guys happen to just be the stone wall. So every time I try to bring us, some I, topics don't require like further like discussion though. That's just the like bold well, reality of well, the show. You're yeah. directly maybe, but what you can do is open your minds to the possibilities, to the maybes, and just throw stuff in. So when I'm trying to open up a scene, you guys come in, burst through the door, and Michael scarn me all over the place, and then we have to start the scene over. But it's perfect, see, like, I love it. In response Let's to keep that, it that like, way. <laughs> I could do that, but I just feel bad. Or if I have to, like, if I have a different topic, I'll wait until I'm like a hundred percent sure you are done what you're going to say yeah. before I derail the conversation and take it like somewhere else. Because you still have thoughts for a topic, and I go off on like a tangent. Then it's kind of mm-hmm. like, well, this show is pretty much the tangent sh- okay. tangent show. Any tangents I have, or any other connections, I will bring up. Okay. What about you, Vass? Are you just going to sit there and be a stone? Yep. Sphinx it. Uh, you just stoned emoji you. You sphinxster. You're such a sphinxster. Um, okay. What do we got? We got some uh, new Joker moon news. We got some trailers. We got some Witcher news. We got some Feige stuff. Uh, some Wick stuff. Stranger Things stuff. Um, oh, this is like totally random. I just had it in my notes. Um, mo- morning kisses in movies and TV are total bullshit. I'm just going to put that out there. It means nothing. It says nothing. It's just I've been noticing it more and more because when you wake up next to somebody and you roll over, they stink just as bad as you do. Nobody makes out in the morning like they do in the TV shows. I just had that in my notes because I thought it was something to talk about. And guess what? Yes, and. It's over now. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Joker is the most profitable comic book movie of all time. That is awesome. I actually knew this because apparently I I I don't know. Okay, I, I feel like this was when I wasn't on the show, so you may have talked about it. But like how Joker, like how like much money they've made is like comparable to like Endgame's amount, just because of how like low the budget was for Joker. Yeah. That's yeah. why it's the most profitable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is fucking crazy. It's, and they're on track. Because we talked me, about to when me, it it's was profitable on a different scale. Mm-hmm. I would say like if you put a budget that matches what Endgame did and then it beat it, mm-hmm. I would say it's better that way. But no, that's why it's not. That's why it's not the same. I get it. So what are you saying? Well, they're saying it's. 
better than Endgame. Yes, like it and? made more it made more money than Endgame. Yes, and well, I don't know. It's I don't, just, know. I don't think it's like a. It's not a competition. Like I don't see it as like like oh you know. But it's just like it's, just, it's, not, it's always a competition. Yeah, yeah. Fucking is. <laughs> I I bash some DC. I so ever since you I turned Facts, against your people. Well, some of them are just stupid. I even expose them saying, "I listen, I'm a DC fan, but you just sound like a clown." He said, Anthony, "Yes, and he said, go ahead. Anything or Endgame was not better than anything DCEU has done." And like he was just bashing, like going off, and I stopped. I'm like, okay, listen here, man. Like, I'm, I hate to do this. And I told him afterwards, I was just like fucking with him, and he understood. He's like, okay, that's fine. Like, just for the sake of debate. Mm-hmm. But he's like, Endgame sucked. You know, like, why is it better than any DC movie? Because you know, Iron Man died. And I'm like, okay, well, like if you because he talked about the Dark Knight and Joker, mm-hmm. and so those are great. But the comment you rebuttaled against already acknowledged those two movies as being very good, mm-hmm. and he strictly bashed the DCU. So you coming in like saying, oh. I don't know. Just DC fans are really ignorant. Honest to God. Like, mm-hmm. look at that video of me doing, was it Suicide Squad or Justice League? Where I had to do a rebuttal like two weeks afterwards because I realized. I think it was Justice League. Yeah, it was Justice League. They just don't think before they speak and they just makes us look like idiots. Because well, I think, I think DC as a whole gets that reputation, not just the movies. That that what the fans think are just stupid. They speak. Yeah. Well, just like, you don't, they don't think. Like, you can hate Marvel or dislike Marvel, mm-hmm. but like, give them some props. Like, Endgame, like, you can hate it as a movie. It's still the number one movie of all time. People still liked it. Yeah. Like, at least, like, you can't say the whole movie sucked. Like, even for DC movies, you can't say, like, every part of a DCEU film sucked ass. No, it's true. Like, there are some golden points. Yeah. It's not a war. At the end of the day, like, both companies, like, profit off each other. Like, they're Mm -hmm. both successful due to the other, like, company. It's a rivalry. I just don't understand, like... I just find it really stupid. And it looks like Kevin Feige's about to fucking shove it all down the tubes because... He supposedly wants to release three to four Marvel movies per year. It's like that's a little much. Okay, no, th- that is whatever. The fact that they said you need to watch the D or the Disney Plus shows, yeah, yeah. yeah that what that's what pisses me off because it's like Agreed. I am not going to watch every single one. I just Falcon saw that before you Soldier, guys got here. Yes, yeah. yeah, that's the only one. And what if those are the only ones I will one hundred percent watch? I'm going to watch. See, what if probably sure. won't be. Yeah, yeah it, won't, it, it, won't it won't matter, matter but anyway. Like but the rest of them will. The Wanda one I really want to watch. Which and I'll Loki. check them. I'll check them all out. Honestly, though, saying I don't want to like it was expected. It was expected. To that the fact that he said it makes you mad, but realistically, you knew in the back of your mind, it's like, okay, everything coming out now is canon. It's all gonna flow. It's all gonna connect. So it would benefit you to watch everything that comes out of Disney Plus, Marvel related, mm-hmm. MCU related. Uh, therefore, when a movie comes out, you're up to date. But whether all of them connect, I don't know. Mm-hmm. So for me, my only issue is that like the benefit part makes sense mm-hmm. but not in the state like not in the sense anymore you can't say it will benefit you watching agents of shield would have benefited you okay. watching like netflix shows would have benefited you even though they like, got retcon now yeah but these ones you like it seems like you need to watch it to like understand mm-hmm. where the movies are going and it doesn't seem like it'll just be like agents of shield where it ties in and like yeah. it'll set itself up like if you don't watch it You'll be like left in the dark, and you'll like just go into the how movies. did they get to here kind mm-hmm. of thing. Yeah. Well, I don't see how. Well, I don't think the net the Marvel TV shows like Daredevil, Jessica mm-hmm. Jones, and stuff had anything to do with it. I think you'd understand some of the references if you watched the MCU. But yes, Agents of Shield is one of those ones where you would like mm-hmm. you'd get a little bit extra. But those were kind of like oh, it, it, it didn't make a big difference. No. I think the only one I think to this day still is where they found Strucker's lab for Ultron, and then they said, let's call the Avengers, and then Age of Ultron is where that kicks off. Okay. Right? I never saw Angels of Shield myself, so no, me neither. Um, very boring. I just think it's, uh, to his point, it is, uh, it's lesser back then, but now the fact that it's going to be like, no, you have to invest in all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, It's not like you have to invest in one movie to understand Endgame, for mm-hmm. instance, which it helps. This is, you have to invest in 13 episodes, so 13 hours worth of content Mm -hmm. to get one and a half to two hours of movie for Doctor Strange, for instance. And I think some of it's like, on top of the three to four movies a year means that we have to watch all of your shows to get those three or four movies a year now. Mm -hmm. Like, And he might be overinflating it. Yeah. Like, there is a thing, too, where I say, like, Endgame's one of those ones where if you haven't seen the movies prior, you are, there's no point to you. You're, yeah. You may not even like it. Like, you'll see some things. You'll be like, oh, that's kind of cool, but I don't know where the fuck I am. I think but yeah. you still needed it, it. It helps. It benefits it. Infinity War, not necessarily. Like, no. you can kind of drop into Infinity War if you've seen the last three or four movies prior to it and be okay. But Endgame's, the, like, the culmination of all of them, so... Mm-hmm. 
I don't know. I think two is the sweet spot for movie releases per year. Two, Agreed. two is good. Mm-hmm. Four is getting a little too much behind it, especially well, for like a major pace yourself, film. Just pace yourself. Like you don't. There's no rush. Like nobody is yeah. like sneaking up on Marvel right now. Like there, yeah. you have no competition. Like yeah. DC, they had Joker. That's it. Like they're just standing up. They're just yeah. standing up. You're already like a hundred meters ahead of them, sprinting full speed. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter. Well, and and I think I hope. Uh, because I guess we started this whole topic on the Joker stuff. Um, I hope that more movies and st- take a page from Joker because they're all worried about profits and stuff. Guess what? Joker is one of those ones where you can make a fuck ton of money. A twenty four has been doing it for a long Watch time. You, didn't Deadpool also have like a really low budget? And the, the first, first one, yeah. one yep. mm-hmm. yeah. Second one, they definitely over blew it. But yeah. you know. They well, can, did you hear. can make really good fucking it's films. Because effects, the CGI was just the biggest factor for them, right? Yeah, well, like, Joker and, was all like practical, wasn't it? Like they didn't have much CGIing to do or like anything else really. And, and that's maybe at the end. That's why they could pull it off the way they did. It's just an art piece mm-hmm. that happens to be tied to the superhero realm of DC. Mm-hmm. But these other ones are pure on superhero effects, everything, villains, all yeah. that stuff. So yeah, heavy CGI, heavy effects. Like it, it's gonna happen the way you know. Well, it's funny about the Kevin Feige thing because I have a note here where Bob Iger was talking about Star Wars taking a hiatus after the ninth one. (laughs) So Kevin Feige's like, no, we're going to shove it down your fucking throat till it comes out of your assholes. And then Bob Iger's like, well, after nine, we're going to have to take a little bit of a break. Well, here's here's the thing, though. Yeah, it sounded a little much. But anyways, uh, with Iger saying that, I think it's because not the loss, but the fact that the Ryan Johnson trilogy is not happening. The the DB and Dan trilogy. They were doing a trilogy, correct? No, I think they series. were just doing a show on Netflix. Or no, no they, were doing Star a, Wars. Uh, they were doing a it Star was a Wars trilogy show. Was it, was it a trilogy? trilogy? I so they've so. lost now. I thought it was a TV show. Nothing, that's, that's why it was so big, because they walked in from a trilogy deal. Like, yeah. Oh, weird. So yeah. they dumped basically two trilogies, and they're only going forward with... Um, who the heck? Don't they have one more spinoff movie? Star the, Wars? Kenobi. Yeah, because they had Kenobi. like... Is that happening? That's a show, though, isn't it? That's it's a TV show? Yeah, okay. I think so. I have no idea. Because I think so, because they had like three regular ones, and I just always assumed it was like going to be three spinoffs. That just makes sense. Yeah. Like, who's sticking around then? Well, so this... they, they've lost their two, their two trilogies that the, that was going to be new movies, right? Well, this is what Iger says in the Star Wars case: Star Wars Nine, which comes out this December, will be the last of the Skywalker saga, yeah. and will go into hiatus for a few years before the next Star Wars feature. So they're going to probably double down still on shows, mm-hmm. especially it's with fine, Disney Plus. Like, who cares? It's if good listen, Mandalorian looks like it's going to be all sorts of awesome. Isn't that like? Doesn't Disney Plus starts on like twelfth? Uh, yeah, what day? Like next yeah, week, a couple days. Like Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, nice. Yeah, so that's gonna Can be you super. Sign up, or do you have to get it that day? That's a good question. I'm not sure. Their server's gonna be fucked if they do. That. Oh, I think they're gonna. It's gonna crash completely. I think it's gonna be a matter of like let the first wave group go of people go, and then probably two or three weeks after get yeah. get it. I'd Nothing's, like to see like, the no, there's nothing that's gonna be gone. Like it's all no, gonna be there. Not at you all. know what? I'm sh- I'm super pissed about the fact that the they said that Netflix on some Samsungs aren't gonna work. Which would make my one TV maybe possibly obsolete in my bedroom. Oh, Why would so? That, so wait, is it like Samsung TVs, Samsung TVs. You know what I've been noticing be able, already. Really, uh, my one Samsung TV, um, like the the app on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The app's been messing around. It doesn't load very well. I've actually stopped using it altogether. I go straight through the PlayStation, Do it. and it's a hundred times better. I well, always yeah. get blockage. Like when I was watching How I Met Your Mother, it would always pause. I'm like, what the heck? And I thought, and it's for a while there, it seemed like it was the that was the only series happening to it. But then I started to notice on other ones too. Like I had to restart it, stop it. Like I have to keep exiting the app and then resetting in before. Like it was just a pain in the ass. So I've I've kind of gone away from the app through the Samsung. Mm-hmm. Um, does it depend the series? Are they doing it all? Like, I don't know. So as of December 1st, some TVs will not be able to operate uh-huh. with it because of technical things or whatever it so is. So I know my mom, who, like, hates Apple, and I'll have to roast her for this when I get home, because <laughs> Apple had something similar, like, just recently, where all, like, if you had an iPhone five. Fast 5, yeah. due to some kind of GPS, like, in the app, like, it was, I said, it's, I didn't read it, like, I don't remember yeah. fully, but it was something to do with the GPS. And, like, come, like, the next week, it was going to just stop like all these apps. If you didn't update, like everything would become obsolete. That was the fives. Anything mm-hmm. five and older? Oh, yeah. You're done. Would be fine. Five and older is fine. Five and younger. Older. Why is it? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yes, that makes sense. Okay. I'm go. thinking of the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah. So older than five yeah, would be so four. Yeah, so fives, yes. fours, and that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Which, honestly, by now, most people will switch out the fives. Five S's, five well, C's. Nick They're still just has garbage. a five. Does he? Yeah. No. Yes. 
No, he's and Because iPhones are awful for it because they're so fucking slow if you I'm don't upgrade. I'm pretty sure he's upgraded. I don't think so. Interesting. We'll have to get him on the horn. We got you on the line, Nick. <laughs> also, okay. I yes, and? <laughs> yes, and? <laughs> yes, and? Well, that was your job, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I know. I was but just waiting. Also, for the joker, I heard a rumor <laughs> that they want to do more like of these DC black like universe films. Like, yeah. not universe, but like just yeah. like of the same style. If well, they're, they're one-offs. the second one. If they're one-offs. Perfect. The next one they I heard they want to do is Lex Luthor. That'd be great. Interesting. But they would need Superman for this, right? Like I'm nope. not a big Superman nope. guy. Like they don't need him. Nope. nope. It could be the. So what would he do? Like I don't. I genuinely know nothing about Lex Luthor. Yeah. He would. He. What you do he is you trans. What you do is you want to. We talked about this when we were talking about um, uh, Doctor Doom. Uh yeah. And so bit. we had said, what if they? What if they had Keanu Reeves as Doctor Doom, and they had a Doctor Doom movie to then bring in the Fantastic Four. So you have this movie that's about Doctor Doom or a show, whatever, mm-hmm. especially if Disney Plus is going to do that thing. Have a really good show surrounding Doctor Doom, like a limited series, five episodes, that's it, yeah. okay? Mm-hmm. And at the end of it, we then get introduced to the Fantastic Four through the villain. Yeah. So maybe they can introduce an, a Superman through a Lex Luthor oh. movie in right. the vein of Joker, you know? Well, I guess technically they introduced Batman through Joker. Then they, yeah, okay. Which could be, which, yeah. which isn't really the Robert Pattinson mm-hmm. one. It's just another Batman. But uh, yeah, I, I, I'm still not a big fan of the fact that they want to do a second one. I like, think one and, more. But Joaquin's like, he's like, we have ideas for a second one. We have a lot for the second one. Trust them, I guess. So um, yeah, I'm just going to trust it because this one was just I think awesome. honestly, just one more. Show them <clears> like <throat> in action and that's good enough. End I, it there. Again, like I said last time, I think it was last week I said this, where, where Todd Phillips has a sequel problem where he just rehashes the stuff from the beginning. So I hope that's not what they do. But like I hope Keen, we don't end up seeing a Joker 2.05. Like even Joaquin though, like he did not want, like he was like very adamant that he was not going to do a sequel before it released. Yeah. And then, like, everybody loved it. And, like, just the fact that he's, like, on board now and he's like, okay, I want to do another one. Like, I just feel like that's a good sign. Like, they're not doing it for money. Like, I feel like he just genuinely, Mm -hmm. like, was very happy that everybody enjoyed it so much, which still, like. Yeah. So then the thing, the the issue could be what if they give them too much money and then they take it to use it and they lose that little bit. Like, so Deadpool 1 was really good. They had to work with limited budget. It was a risk start to finish. Deadpool 2, like I rewatched it a couple days ago, um, it's big, it's bombastic, it's a little too over the top, and it mm-hmm. could have really used just, you know, let's let's rein this back a bit. And so there could be that risk as well where this next Joker ends up being, I guess, it, it takes it out of the idea Realism. of it coming. Well, no, no, the indie vibe and takes it into the blockbuster vibe, which may take away the whole feel altogether. Do I don't you know. really think that Warner Brothers would be the kind of company that would interrupt a DC film's progress and make it make the director make their vision? Absolutely. Yeah. We are. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Fast forward three years later, petitions for the jo- for the t- the Phillips cut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. People are saying HBO Max. They're saying that they have the Snyder Cut. HBO Ooh. Max is saying it, and they'll release no, it? No, HBO Max. People are saying that HBO Max Actually has a quote-unquote Trump card mm-hmm. for the streaming wars, and they're saying it's the Snyder Cut. Interesting. I don't think the Snyder Cut's a Trump card. But no, okay. So it's you know, a big thing. You know people but would buy HBO Max just to watch that movie, though? Do you know how many people bought Game of Thrones, and then the second it was done, got rid of Yeah, it doesn't HBO. matter, though. They still get the sale. Or, sorry, got HBO for Game of Thrones. But to, to that extent, though, I guess they have more DC content, though, like coming out for HBO Max. Yeah. Mm. So if you're a DC fan, you keep it There's for that There's too many fucking shows There is. Now. Isn't it the same? I just started the new Paul Rudd show on Netflix. Oh. Don't well, Living um, With Yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's good. I, it's so I, weird to see him like on a TV show, but it's yeah. like so far it's like entertaining. I've like, heard good things about it. I haven't been able to. Well, entertaining is the wrong word, so I just like it's enjoyable because yeah. it's not like a funny like show. But yeah, yeah. But just, I don't think you have to be laughing to be entertained. Mm-hmm. I know. I was just I was la- stayed. All I wanted to do after Joker was hug my mom, but I was still entertained as fuck by that movie. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Theater checks are amazing. What is it? Theater checks are amazing. Oh yeah. Uh, company where to use. Um, no, no, no. We said that. We said that. The Batman castings. Kind of. Oh yeah, we can go there. Um, let's do this. I think. Oh yeah. That is. So two things. There's another one. So Rogan, Rogan, Rogan Machado. He trained Keanu Reeves for John Wick. Is training Robert Pattinson in jujitsu for Batman, which is 
real good to hear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's going to be... So will Robert Pattinson be trying to do like his own stunts and shit then too? Or like... Apparently I, he's training I, very hard. So yeah, clearly think, he's going to be trying to do as much as he can. Yeah. I think so too. And I, and, and if this guy's doing it that trained John Wick, then mm-hmm. I'm... I'm thinking that they're going to want to capitalize on that. My, that they're, it's not going to be a John Wick movie, obviously, mm-hmm. but I think if they, I think if they take, like we say, the best thing about Batman versus Superman, at least for me, was the warehouse, the warehouse scene. Yeah. yeah, with less cuts, mm-hmm. then I think I that'd was be say, good. If they could do like a one continuous. Daredevil scene where they do the wall, like the hallway, yeah, yeah, something, something like that. that. Yeah, and, and like, but in a big open space mm-hmm. where you can see him use his gadgets and stuff, and it'd be really cool if they use a the CGI for things like. Um, in Justice League where he throws his batarang at Flash and it kind of slows down. So if they use effects like that so we can kind of see the mechanics of these things as opposed to just, oh, it's just like he's just... Kind of like how 300 did where it's like slowed it down and then speed, sped it back up. Kind of, but not like... That extreme. Not too much, yeah. yeah. I, like not a not an editing orgy going on. Like yeah. you still want to see things happening, right? Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I thought that was really cool. And I really hope the new oh. Batman movie like actually focuses on like his gadgets and shit. Because I don't think any Batman movie really has like mm. like the Dark, Dark Knight, Knight trilogy. But like did. they just kind of like did. they didn't really focus. Like they just had like basic stuff. But, like I know like Ben Affleck. Like I feel like he had the vibe where like it'd be like Arkham Asylum like gadgets. Like just the all oh. the shit he has. Like you don't need yeah. to have you know like twenty things in your belt, but just like all the shit he makes and just showing like. Yeah. how useful and resourceful Batman is to like be able to make mm-hmm. shit on the fly. I think what I'd really like is if um, at this one, to springboard off yours, because I would imagine that somebody like Batman will have his contingencies, mm-hmm. but he also learns what he needs to have once he actually interacts with somebody. So let's say he interacts with, for instance, um, Penguin, which is supposedly Colin Farrell, which I think is a really weird casting. Mm-hmm. Penguin will bring a certain type of thing. So he deals with arms a lot, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe he doesn't have a disruptor like they have in the Arkham games until Batman realizes that he deals with guns and all his guys have guns. So during the movie at one point, he's like, he figures out what he actually needs to defeat these guys because he's might have, you know, brushed death with mm-hmm. them, right? And so he's evolving his his uh, his gadgets as he's meeting these new guys these new villains that are introducing more difficult challenges for him i don't know if you could fit that all in one movie but i think that'd be a a smart way to introduce these gadgets otherwise it's like well how would he know that he needs these things for these guys if he's Mm. never met them well i know in the amazing spider-man 2 there was that one thing where he faced electro for the first time and his web shooters got like destroyed Mm. and then afterwards he spent all that there's a whole montage of him trying to like make the like yeah what do you call it like electric proof yeah yeah like that was a great idea web shooters that was an amazing like Shitty series, great moments. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that one had. uh Well, and even I guess we'll yeah from Amazing Spider-Man two that Times Square scene, mm-hmm. like where it oh, slowed that, down and it was following that was, the that thing. That was very nice. That was an incredible that. sequence. Mm-hmm. Um, the lizard fight in the thing with the Stan mm-hmm. Lee cameo. That was an incredible sequence from the first That's one. My like Stan Lee yeah. cameo of all time. Really? Yeah, in the library, I found mm-hmm. that so because it was so like out of the blue. Like you liked it the best, hey? That was the one I found the most surprising. Watching oh, the surprising! Like yeah. you just watch it, and that's what it, like, that was supposed to be, right? It's like, oh shit! Like he's yeah. in the movie, and like it was just funny. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I just found it really funny as a kid. And yeah. Stick- but no, I think that's a good idea though. If they if they show more gadgets, but again, if he's a young guy, then he doesn't have all of them that he mm-hmm. would that let's say Ben Affleck has because he's got decades of like. Alfred, I need yeah. something to stop this thing or that yeah. thing, or you know, Mister Freeze shows up. I need something to help me with Mister Freeze's. Mister Freeze would be a cool villain if they actually did him seriously. A cool villain? Fuck me, <laughs> that wasn't even implied. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, <laughs> and motherfucker, like Arkham Asylum. Like they just need to make that mo- game a movie. Like with all the same like villain. Just go on YouTube and type it in. No, but like I'm just saying, like <laughs> start a petition. <sighs> yeah, but you know what? The Snyder Cut's already got these things going on. Nothing's happening. There's too many petitions yeah. out there. Yeah. We need a petition to stop the petitions. Hey, that's one I'd sign up for. Um. Yes, anyway, so Colin Farrell as Penguin. <laughs> is, I, I find that surprising, the Colin Farrell as Penguin thing. He's skinny, right? Like I think I know who you're talking about. I, he's got literally... a Harvey Dent or he's got a black mask type of vibe to yeah, him. But, but I think you and McGregor. They're trying to go a different route, obviously, with the casting. And it doesn't have to be like what we remember the Penguin being. Like even Cobblepot in the Gotham yeah, series, I was say, he wasn't a short, chunky person. He was just, he had the features of it with his facial and the way he walked, for sure. But at the end of the day, they could easily make him anybody. He just and like he, could be, he could be a sophisticated Penguin. 
but psychotic. Well, he, I mean, but that's a young version. So you can say that, okay, he's young and he's skinny yeah. and we know him to turn into, like when we meet him, he's older, like in his 60s or something. Sure. So then he gains all the weight, right? Isn't like yeah. Robert Pattinson's movie also like the younger Batman? He's not established at all, is he? So then maybe to your point, that's yeah. what they'll do. They'll, they'll he kind of looks like he could play like, he's like a poor man's like, what's the, the guy from the DCEU's Deathstroke. He just looks like, not you a poor so? man, but he just looks like, he can be Deathstroke. I could see him. I don't know. Uh, Arrow he's, Deathstroke. He's, he's, he's done very well. You know what's what I what's funny about him is uh, that Daredevil movie, with, Daredevil movie with Ben oh, Affleck yeah. that was terrible. He was the best part in it because like he was so psychotic and weird, and it's like, yeah. was he this bullseye? Guy, yes, yeah, he was. he was really funny. Like he literally just, had the bullseye. I think yeah. he could do. Like I think he, he might could make a good penguin. It. Honestly, I like so. I might retract my statement. Well, I mean, we'll obviously see what he looks like. Redacted. Redacted. Yeah. Um, and then um, Andy Serkis as Alfred. Yeah, that could be good. That's also interesting. That is, it's like the Aunt May effect. You just, yeah. you look, he seems way too young. I'm not, I'm not hating. I'm just saying like. No, Andy Serkis is just fairly weird. old. Yeah, but I don't know. He's just like, you expect like, you know, old Aunt May from 2002. <laughs> and you just yeah, get guess. like anyone else in comparison. Like they don't yeah. wrinkly and old. You're just like, oh, there you go. Well, really, when you look at the Spider-Mans and what their aunts look like. They're pretty close. Like Tobey Maguire, 30 year old playing an 18 year old with a grandmother for an aunt. Yeah. Like, and then uh, our Andrew Garfield with Sally Field. Well, you know, Sally that, Field was passable. It's like, okay, like, yeah, sure, like she like, had, that worked. but then like even Aunt May, oh, Aunt yeah, May, no. like that, but that works because of how young Tom Holland is, Marissa right? Tomei is too hot, though, to be Aunt May. Aunt May is mm. not supposed to be hot. She's supposed to be there. Who says well, she yeah. can't be hot? In every iteration of Con- now, now it's hot. now it's canon. Now you it, cannot now change she it. Is, uh, I don't want oh, to change it. I'm not complaining. Speaking of statement. super hot, Kate Beckinsale's single, gentlemen. Finally. So that means nothing to us because nothing's ever going to well, change. She was with Pete Wentz, which who was the a fuck's very, Pete Wentz. He's that scrawny, uh, gangly-looking guy on SNL. Kate Beckinsale, you said. Yeah, she was in the Underworld series. Pete, have you seen Wentz? Those? I don't you should. So. You should. Isn't no Pete Wentz was the guy? This so guy? Pete Davidson, not Pete Wentz. Kate Beckinsale was with Pete Davidson. Yeah, man. Did we talk about this? No, we haven't. Oh, or we have maybe. Yes, we have. Nick was on the episode that one time. No. Yes. No. Yes. Look it up. And I think we yes. did. Now wait. Now I think. And. Oh fucking Pete Davidson! I hate that guy so much. Well, she didn't. He, for a first while. of all, he's not Clearly. funny. Like and I and I spent after that episode I was like wait hey, is Pete Davidson the same guy who dated Ariana Grande yep, yep. I think oh, they were fuck, engaged this guy's for cleaning like up what? <laughs> Pete <laughs> Davidson house. please cleaning like house. DM my meme page and tell me your Pete secrets because Davidson <laughs> is a respect fuck. to you I don't give a shit respect is earned so I went back to see if he's at like to go through his stuff because every time I've seen him on SML a few times I just never thought he was funny like I just don't yeah. like his brand so then I typed in Pete Davidson and I went for a good week just looking at his comedy. Sucks. Not funny. Don't care. He's like Adam Devine to me. I don't think Adam Devine's funny at all. See, I find Adam Devine funny in movies. Just his actions. Have you seen Workaholics too? No. He's pretty funny. I want that. to. I, I've seen, I, I haven't there. seen like the full series by any means, but I've seen like certain episodes and he's pretty good in it. There's like a Game Over Man show or whatever on Netflix I've that he that. was in. Yeah. He wasn't very good. Hmm. Oh my God. Fuck you, Pete Davidson. <laughs> That could be that episode title. Fuck you, Pete Davidson. No. That's too harsh, though. I think he's already figured out what it's going to be called. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we've already said yes and too many times. There's no way that it's not the title. Spoilers. Yeah. Yes and. I think I've done it a couple times already. Yeah. Last week's, I actually got a few people that got it. Like, the last week's title. Nice. That was nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See? I had a few people that were like, oh, that was real good. And then <laughs> the best was when you realized that I put mm-hmm. the mic stand and the pop filter in well, the 69. Well, I kept 69. looking at it, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> either I'm really perverted or, like, this was intentional. I'm like, okay, there's no way this was, like, not not intentional. Did you? Yes. Yes, and... yes a, a thousand times, yes. Yeah, I did it at home, too, because I brought the all the gear over to, uh, Dusk, to the yeah. condo. So just looks at G for the past two hours as he's just setting it up in position, just looking for the right camera angles. What are you doing? Luckily, Shh. she wasn't home. It's a weird way to say that. Yeah. I guess. Sorry. Pervert. Prevert. Mm-hmm. Um, Terminator bombs at the box office. That kind of sucks because I heard really good things. I, I, I saw it, it actually. Oh, you saw it? I did. The review. Very good. You liked it? It holds up. See, everybody else does. Well, you can't say it holds up because it, it just holds came up out. to Judgment Day. Ah, we're it, talking. It, it's good as part of the series. Part of Terminator original. Yep. Judgment Day and then Dark Fate. Wow. Everything else is retcon as far as we're concerned. Because again, James Cameron back in, in, in easy, easy. Did you say James Cameron? Yes, I did. <laughs> it went the water went down the wrong tube. Clearly. Okay, go. But this is James Cameron's trilogy. What he always had in in uh, in 
in mind, I guess you could say. But I think the timing was right with how the actors grew and stuff like that. And with the story he created, it was really well done. I'm just surprised it bombed. Maybe the Terminator movies just don't have the draw they used to because after like Genesis and and Salvation, everyone's like, I'm over it. I don't care. Well, I didn't run this this is a, I'll, 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 What I'll tell you is this is Sarah Connor's movie. Cool. This is her movie about her life and what happens. And honestly, it's it's very well done. Um, and I think it deserved a little bit more box office feel, to be honest. Um, it just sucks that it's doing so bad. And I went back and looked at the budgets, and then all the budgets kind of match up for the most part. Past, mm-hmm. past Judgment Day, they start going like you know, in the hundred eighty million range. So it's like okay, it's not like it had an astronomical budget to make this movie work. Um, it's just not doing well. It doesn't have the draw it used to have. But who knows? Well, maybe, I just feel like maybe it'll have a critical claim. Terminator is just to me always seemed like really oversaturated. Like I've never seen a single Terminator movie because oh, I have man. no Watch idea where to even start. One and two. That's all. One and two. So are are worth it, one, yeah. two on this new one are the only like canon it's, it's ones. Terminator and it's Judgment Day. Forget everything else. Yeah. Then watch this one. I might do all. that then because like I there's so how many are there in total? No, I think there's six. Like, I think there's six in total. Yeah. Death was way more. So no, I think there's the more first two, three was Rise in the Machines. Uh, Salvation. Oh yeah. Was with uh, Christian Bale. Christian Bale and Chris. No, no. Uh, Sam, Sam Worthington. Was it good with Christian Bale? Didn't see it. You know what? Everyone didn't like it. I think I, I kind of remember it, and I thought it was okay. I can't remember. And I remember then seeing half of it. I saw Genesis in theater, and it wasn't. It wasn't very good. Um, Let's start off with Saga. I don't know. No, I don't think so. Yeah, no, it's a joke. Second, yeah. second okay. Genesis. Cool, cool. Sonic I thought you guys one. would get that. No, yes, sorry. and. Boomers. Yeah. <laughs> We're not boomers at all. I know. <laughs> easy there. That's Gen- what any young millennial easy, has to say e- to an older their person. Gen Z. <laughs> but anyways, yes. I, I think it is a little bit better. Just sucks that it's doing so bad. But cool. I think it, I think it'll be good once like the streaming comes out. People might mm-hmm. give it a chance. Well, I've actually never heard anybody. Like I heard online, like I already said, it was actually like it was okay. Everyone's yeah. been saying it's a fitting. Like, casual movie goer gave it a two point five, which is like a passing grade. It's like fifty. I don't know. It's like on the lower end. But even then, like a lot of people were saying, like, yeah, it was okay. It was like the Halloween like one last year. Except people like I myself thought it was really good, but people still yeah. said like, yep, it wasn't shit. It was enjoyable. Yeah. Well, and maybe that's because most people are thinking it's gonna be crap anyways. And yeah. like I said, they those trailers two. weren't good. Okay, no, I, I'll, I'll be back. I hate that line. All I hear is, I'll be back. That's because you've seen... So, I'll tell you why. You haven't seen the first Terminator. I understand it. I just hate hearing it. No, no, no. I know, but you've never... You haven't seen it from the first original movie to make it badass for you. You've heard it in all sorts of other movies. fair. So, right now, for you, it's like, what? Like, everyone's saying it. I don't get it. Or you do get it, but it's not that great for you. But, like... I remember watching it. The first time I heard him say I'll be back was Judgment Day because I watched yeah, Judgment yeah. Day first, yeah. then the first Terminator because mm-hmm. I like I was younger. Mm-hmm. Anyways, and it was amazing in there. And then I heard it in other movies. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Like reference, whatever, right? So it's not that bad because yeah. it just reminds me of the first one. So I think for you, you've heard it in all other contexts except the original. That's right. Did yeah. you enjoy the line in the movie? It was whatever. Okay, I, I just hate it. It was delivered it's, by it's her, part of which is kind of funny. Yeah, but yeah, this, yeah, that was the part in the trailer, right? Yeah, just, this movie just reminds me of like a weird take of the new Halloween, where instead mm-hmm. of like, you know, I forgot the ladies like the, in Halloween, but them, them going back like to forest with each other because mm-hmm. I know she's protecting another girl, like Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah, yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis. I don't know. I want to watch this movie. Honestly, very worth it. The fight sequences are very well, well done. Free. That's why I just don't care. It's well, that's for nice me. For you. I just go in. Uh, well, I had a ticket. I had the vouchers for you guys if you want them. I said yes, and you didn't. You never. I said a thousand said times yes. yes. Oh, okay. Or I thumbs Mind up. You, you did give me a free movie already. And so. then, well, okay. I have a bunch of my house. I'll just send you photos of them. Oh, that's all that has to happen. Just the code online. Cool, 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 cool. Anyways, yeah, very good. Worth seeing. Oh, I saw what's it called? No, I might go see it. <sighs> Countdown, countdown. That's what it was called. What? So it's this new horror. Not new. It's been a couple of weeks old. I'm not going to go into full review on it, but That's it was still new. It was based <laughs> on this year. I believe. I'm not sure because I remember there was this Russian like app a couple years ago called the Blue Whale, where they'd have teenagers teenagers download it. They'd accept this waiver and saying like, once you like accept and play, you cannot stop playing. Mm-hmm. And like they'd get them to do a bunch of crazy shit, like carve something into your arm and send photos. If you don't, they'd come and kill you. Like some hackers. Oh, that do kind of yeah, like, yeah. I saw that trailer. It looked really weird. Then, no, it was a tr- isn't like a truth or dare thing almost? 
But it was uh, called Countdown. Yeah, this the movie's called Countdown. This was an actual like uh, real life event that happened. Uh, so almost, it was, it's almost like TikTok, but on crack. Well, no, because TikTok is like Vine. Oh, I thought TikTok was like yeah, challenges. No, yeah, no. TikTok's oh. just Vine. TikTok I'm not going into. I didn't do Vine. I went into Snapchat and Instagram. I I'm TikTok. not doing TikTok. See, I actually enjoyed the Some Vine stuff. Fu- that- so much of residential memes. I don't understand like if they're popular. Like on the Explorer, it's just residential like memes. Like What is that? What like is literally like indigenous people doing residential memes. I just don't understand like is it popular on TikTok? I was so confused. There's like five back to back. I don't get I it. Don't get it. It's like on the res, fucking res. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Oh. I'm this is I'm not making fun. This is literally word what for word what it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but cool. Countdown was just a basic horror film. Like, has some really good jump scares, honestly. But mm. it was just, I don't know. Interesting. I heard Paranormal Activity 7 just got greenlit. Of Jeez. course it did. Of course. Those seven. are other, Okay. So those are example of super, super low budget movies that mm. make a ton of money. Yeah. Like, those movies could be made for, like, they get, get actors and actresses that are nobody knows yeah. about. And they have well, a house. I think it's better if you have nobody that knows about them, honestly. Mm-hmm. Like, it's more like immersive. Well, yeah. the Gemini Man movie, uh, and I mean, the Terminator one, and some of these other bigger movies that aren't doing very well are proving that, like, the star power is on the decline. Like, no one cares about the star power anymore. Like, maybe Tom Cruise is the last person, but we saw, like, Will Smith's star power wasn't enough to bring people to see Gemini Man. But wouldn't and The Rock also be, like, considered one of them that has, like, that big... Like, but overseas, it, Rock is killing it, man. Like, yeah. he's got them all. So is Terminator, or uh, Transformers, but oh, we yeah. saw the tragic end of that story. Well, that's it's on the rise. No. Bumblebee was a good start. Yeah, mm-hmm. I will say that. Um, yeah, bring anyways, but... Back. Yes, yes. <laughs> Leave Shia LaBeouf After Honey he's Boy, he's good. redeeming himself as an actor. Bring him back. I, I think that'll be going backwards if he goes to the Transformers. That's true, that's fair. Shia LaBeouf, focus on your career first. <laughs> um, uh, okay. The Stranger Things 4, they released the title of the first episode, which will be The Hellfire Club. And um, Is that important? Is that, was that referenced before? Like, It's actually, it, it wasn't referenced before, but it's, a, it's much more intriguing than you think. So... There's a Hellfire Club in the X-Men world, like it has to do with X-Force and stuff, but obviously that's not the case. But the Hellfire Club was an actual name for several exclusive clubs for high society rakes established in Britain and Ireland in the 18th century. The name is most commonly used to refer to Sir Francis Dashwood's Order of the Friars uh, of Wycombe. Such clubs are rumored to be the meeting places of persons of quality who wish to take part in socially perceived immoral acts. And the members were often involved in politics. Neither the activities nor membership of the club are easy to ascertain. The clubs were rumored to have distant ties to an elite society known only as the Order of the Second Circle. So this so, sounds fr- freaking badass. It's almost like the Court of the Owls in the Batman so world. So it's kind of like just the Illuminati in a way. I or think so. Hostile. Uh, yeah, the Bulldogs yeah. tattoos or whatever. Yeah. So it seems like... This whole situation with the Stranger Things, the Hellfire Club is behind all of it, and it might have to do with Harp, H- Harper, Hopper. Hopper, sorry, Harper, Hopper going through the portal, which is I think we all assume that that's what happened. Yeah, I don't think exactly. they're going to kill him off. So he goes through the portal, but there's a secret society that's operating in the shadows. So it's like a Truman Show, no horror. Well, because they're controlling everything, correct? Yeah, but that's one guy. No, Truman Show is different because Truman Show is more about Truman himself. I'm saying like the Court of Owls that are the secret society of politically minded individuals running Gotham City. And it's just this, again, Illuminati, whatever you want to call it. So it seems like the Illuminati of this world. Or it's been a part of our world. But you're saying they're controlling that the upside down correct I, i'm thinking they're behind the yep. opening of the upside down i think okay. the upside down has always existed and that okay. its entrance way was funded m- moved forward by and like controlled by this hellfire club People based on learn. that well it, and again this thing actually existed apparently yeah. benjamin franklin was a part of the one of the original ones and I stuff can see that so that's pretty cool i think that's really awesome and this is the final season correct like they yeah. confirm this that's and good. last I season was so seen, good i've only seen the first one the third season was actually like the third season really was good. exceptional yeah, like i would it say it's says. probably one of my favorite ones like just the yeah. one like for netflix shows i don't know why i always have the problem like when i get bored halfway through like se- season long, three man. for all shows i got bored of daredevil and stranger things were my favorite ones um no, if you, season two was really messy. That's yeah. what I heard. Yeah. Um, but 
then season three makes up for a lot of the messiness. Like, so the Max character, the redheaded girl and her brother, mm. Billy, Billy didn't care for them at all. The Mars and Vegeta. Hold on, hold sacrifice. on. I didn't care about them at all in the second one. I'm like, what is the point of it? They introduced Max as this gaming wizard, and then that was it. That's the, they only used that to introduce her. That was it. And then Never she became a love again. interest. But she became so much more relevant in the third one mm-hmm. that it was like, man, you guys could have done so much with her in the second season to make her even more important. Um, but they did do a really great job with the second season, I would say, is all about Dustin and what's the oh, guy? Steve. Steve. Okay. Oh, Actually, amazing. Well, because in season two, that was the only like thing people talked about was Dustin and Steve. And I even I, I and I'm a, such an idiot. This is why I stopped doing reviews. Is that I totally forgot to even mention the Dustin and Steve relationship in the in the review that I did. That's why I stopped doing video reviews because I would forget pertinent information. Like a bro friendship or bromance? Yeah, it's a bromance. Oh. It's um, it's unbelievable. And then the third one, it's it's even better. They're not and gay. Dustin's like very. That's young. Why I just had yeah. to clarify. I just and, wanted to know. And Uma Thurman and Ethan Hawke's daughter is in it. Dude, she oh. is hot. She is awesome. <laughs> she is so awesome. She was also in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. She was uh, one of the uh, Manson's. Uh, just followers. weird. She's just like she's not like so not good. like overly. Just looks so nice. On she, just looks nice. She's just got like nice set of jeans. Yeah, and what's funny because both Ethan Hawke and Uma Thurman Uma Thurman have uh, very specific facial features. Mm-hmm. And together they made this like incredibly beautiful and super talented daughter. Is she one of like the younger kids, or is she the older? She's one of. She's yeah. like she the, works with Steve at this okay. mall, uh, at the one of the food court malls. And Dustin and Moy is the guy with the curly hair. Yeah, with the like messed up teeth or like yeah. whatever the thing is. Yeah, and then he's got like and oh man, you have to watch it. It's yeah, yeah. so good. Like I, was, I said I've only seen season one. I might have to rewatch it and go through the gauntlet. And maybe. season one is exceptional. I know. I I enjoyed yeah. the season one. One I thing got I through quick that but... isn't a spoiler because just the milf, like the whatever his name, the mom and that... with with Billy, that was yeah. so weird. Yeah, that was it a seemed too much. very like borderline illegal. What was going on? Yeah, we don't know it's what his 70s, age man. is. Seventy eighties. Eighties. Yeah, I'm just saying though, it was very <laughs> uncomfortable know. to watch. Yeah, I thought that. I think maybe because he's a high school kid. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that was a little weird. Also, just the thought of that, like if some like one of your friends doing that to your mom was just like, yeah, that'd be weird. Yeah, just odd. I don't know. Well, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't stay on. It. It he's was not like a, one, he's yeah, not a yeah, friend yeah. of anyone. Yeah, but it was, so, so it was just there. It didn't. They didn't focus. It was on like a one much. episode thing, and that was it. Yeah, it. It was this. It was like out of all the layers that Stranger Things had, it was one of the bottom layers that yeah. was just there. Whatever. But really, all it did was to to have Billy in a vulnerable situation so mm. that the events of the third one can happen yeah you know um but anyways i think that's super super interesting i uh, you guys should really check out the hellfire club because it's it's like again when you go down the rabbit hole of the illuminati and you start having the fucking wall of all the connections with the fucking threads and shit like yeah. it'll you know get your shit going that's not a phrase that people should use get your shit going get your shit going um your shit going. we can talk about oh did you guys? Um, there's a company wanting to make a Vietnam movie. I heard about this. Using yes. James Dean, who's been dead since the 50s, um, they want to completely CGI him and use right. him in the movie. Stupid, right? It doesn't make sense. It's I'm fucking pretty, stupid. Pretty sure so. by now you can find an actor that kind of looks like him. You don't even need no, to. No, but yeah, it's like if, I remember, I read one. If you're hell bent on a James Dean esque guy, then you find him. Get the fucking guy that did. Uh, who was the the guy that did it in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? I don't. Know. Um, he was the guy in Homeland too. It's the redhead. He was in Billions. Oh, da- Damien Lewis. Damien Lewis. He looked like... Uh, no, he doesn't have this right look. No, honest. but I mean, like, why do you need James Dean? It's to and some why... point. That is a hundred, it's just it's very obvious that it's there to uh, like... Clint Eastwood's son would do Out that. of the way, people will just say, listen, I want to see this and just see how it looks in the movie. Mm-hmm. But it, I just... I think it's bad because like how you get new actors out there because this is a trend and people start doing yeah. it more and more. Yeah, you're never gonna see any new actors because all they're gonna do is you're gonna just see Robert Downey Jr. being Iron Man in 50 years, based on CGI. It's, it's like, not gonna, cares? it's not gonna be a good thing. This is what Robert De Niro was saying, where it's gonna look cartoony mm-hmm. if they start using the de aging stuff. Like yeah. it's fine every once in a while, but yeah, this is going way if, too far. If it serves a correct purpose for your film, like then Gemini sure. Man, it worked. Yeah. It, like well, even the practically, Irishman, it worked. worked well. Commercially, it did not work well, well and at it all, worked but... for the story because yeah. that's what it was, right? Yeah. See, an Irishman, and it was, and Will Smith's alive. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. In Irishman, though, if they decided to use um, a double for his flashback scenes, no one would care. 
And we'll understand, okay, this is supposed to be the De Niro character, yeah. this is supposed to be the Pacino character, whatever. Yeah. We'll get over it. Um, it's nice that it's the same guy, so you definitely get that feel. Yeah. But don't use somebody that's dead though. But yeah, this is what like they that's, said. That's, that's, that's the big excuse. Thing. Uh we asked their family and said it was okay. If somebody came to me saying, Hey, we want to use your great great grandpa who died in the nineteen fifties in a movie, is that okay if we give you a bunch of money? Uh yeah, okay. I don't give a like no one knows no one of his family would it's safe to say nobody would like know him who's alive today, right? Yeah, I, well, no. Except there's, maybe there's, the grandparents. There's, there's lots of people like in Hollywood, like old Hollywood, that like family around. would sell the rights off. I don't know, like, and the family saying it's okay, that's fine. But I think it's just the guy, the 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 idea of it is like, come on. I'm yeah. glad that everybody's on the same page though, and like as a society, we we're like, better. this is no morally a, a gray fan. area, and we don't like it. It's like, I think okay. it's funny that Chris Evans is the one like leading the charge on this, and like a bunch of other actors yeah, are like, Chris Evans could play that character. No, well, he's too old. I think how no, old no, is no, James Dean when he was so. younger? He was, I think he was in his early 40s or something oh, when he, he died. So. Young. I thought he was like 20-ish. Oh, I guess they do need Fuck, a maybe. Person then, yeah. Actually, you know what? I don't know. I'm just throwing numbers I just saw out. the photo. And Take a look at it. Young. We have the technology. Mm. Um, mm. I don't know. I think it's stupid, and I think it's a bad uh, trend. Yeah. And like, if you're going to do younger versions, like you said, make sure, first of all, the person's alive. I mean, if it's an autobiography like they do for... Uh, you know, for stuff like that, that's fine. But to yeah. star a like James, a CGI James Dean, yeah, he was like twenty four, twenty four. Okay, well, it's like for Bohemian off. Rhapsody, they just decide to do okay. We're gonna holograph Freddie Mercury. We're not gonna get a a body guy, right? Yep. So that, why, like, why bother? That's yeah. And and at that point, it's like that's not that's not. It's yeah. just not good form. Yeah. To quote Hook, bad where, form. Where in anything, it's actually more creative to find someone who can look and act the same way that that person did. That's why you have actors, so they can act out these roles. But not everyone, like Sasha Baron Cohen, he might have the hype for Freddie Mercury, but what he wanted to go through with the direction of Bohemian wasn't what they wanted. But no, they for found, sure. But they found Rami Malek, and he's like, okay, we're going to, we we creatively sink. Yeah. Uh, Rocket Man, they had, uh, what's well, his name? Again, uh, Elton John's alive. So exactly. if so they really did. wanted to, they could have had him de-aged all the way the fuck down, but that yeah. would have been weird. Tating exactly. something, Taren, wasn't it? Taron Egerton. Taron Egerton, that's it. I can't remember. I, I think the big thing is the fact that he's dead and you're doing an entire movie with him. Yep. I think that's fucking If it was weird. like a small scene, it's like, okay, that's cool. But like, yeah, like as a lead role, like... But if it was a small scene, why waste all that money on the CGI when you can just get another actor to play the role? Just like, to say you did it. Like, just like, oh, we did this with You know what, man? That's cool. It's like, oh, okay. Go to Coachella, go watch a hologram of Tupac, or no, go yeah. watch a hologram Actually, of Old Dirty cool. Bastard, and that's about it. I like, think Drake does a lot of those, like, concerts where he has, like, he? that shit is cool as fuck. Some of that stuff is, like, again, it's it's a one-off thing, mm-hmm. and it's kind of cool, but I don't know. Fuck. I think it's just weird. I wouldn't sign up on it. I, I honestly sign off think we're going to, like, live in the age where technology gets like so like immersive like not great but like you know ready player one how you could like just go into a world like yep. that i she genuinely had, think I we'll be able to do that um what was her name in uh brooklyn 99 uh, who was... let me see the face hawkins, hawkins yeah. so hawkins from brooklyn 99 she's at my brother-in-law's restaurant right now what yeah she's in regina right now she's at his restaurant my sister-in-law's like messaging our group our sibling group chat oh i I was just so, hilarious. I'm sad. I thought it was lunch for a second, and I realized, no, oh no, no not lunch. I was gonna go over. Lunch time is over. <laughs> lunch time is no, it's not lunch. <laughs> no, it's this lady. Yeah, I know who Hawkins oh, is now. Yeah. I remember. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Why is she here? I, who knows? I don't know. Hmm. Uh, so, um, Soph's like, get her to sign a Brooklyn Nine Nine picture. <laughs> Uh, that's cool. Uh, he's had a lot of famous people there. Is that Diplomat? Yeah. Yeah, I know. He's got like the whole wall of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. I mean, yeah, you were the one. Yeah, the wrestling story. That was so funny. When you told me that, I was dying. (laughs) Actually, you know who was in? Chuck Liddell was in three days ago. Chuck Liddell. And, uh, Luke uh, Rockhold. And, yep, they were, they were there. He's got pictures with him, which was sweet. I seen Chuck Liddell. That wrestling. That was so funny. Dude, that wrestling thing for like, yeah, that was probably one of my best restaurant stories ever. I <laughs> never went back to that table. Um, Eternals bomb. Do you guys know about the Eternals thing where there was like a bomb set off? Or- oh yes, no, I they found. The yeah, so they found an old World War II bomb that didn't go off, and they had to evacuate everybody so the bomb yeah. squad could defuse it. But so like, nobody was happened. hurt. Yeah, nothing. nothing. Don't okay. get. Nobody it. stepped on it. Like it wasn't a big deal. They just found a bomb. Like oh. Let's stop. Yeah, they definitely were making it out. Was it, it legit? It was meant to be thing. a prop? Like, no, it was a World know. War II bomb. Oh, okay. Like, cool. they just, because in Germany, like, all the time, they find these bombs around. Oh, it's filming there. Oh, yeah. okay. That makes sense. I, I, told, Germany, I honestly but, like, didn't read the article. Yeah. I just saw the head. I'm like, okay, here's the news. <laughs> Headline reader. Yep. <sighs> well, that's usually. It's all you need. Yeah. You get the gist. 
um, um, <laughs> Deets um, to um, come. Um, um, Bad Boys trailer, number two. And I guess we could talk about the Soul trailer. I really like the Soul Fuck, trailer. That was the one. I saw Bad Boys. Like, That's nice. Fuck. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Bad Boys uh, final trailer, I guess, or second trailer, or whatever it was. Second. I think they should have. I think this is the third. They'll have, no, it's a second. Okay, whatever. Is it? Because I didn't see this one. So, so it's te- one day the, ago. The teaser one first day ago. Second, I know okay. this. It was one day ago. Yeah. I so you all saw it? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I don't think it gave away much. Like, I thought it did. Like, I, it went through the structure of the movie, which I noticed, but, like, plot-wise, it's like... I think it gave a lot away, because you never... He kept talking about, like, okay, Marcus kept talking about, okay, this is my last well, one. Well, it's very obvious, like, the way it's going to, like, play out. But I you think. don't realize that happens early on. Yeah, okay, so now you know he's left. He's put on a new team, mm-hmm. and now he has to deal with the theme. Now, my theory, and which is where it gave it away, and it seems maybe it's too obvious, but maybe it hits right on the nail, uh, that the crew he joins, those young guns, are all crooked, right. and they try to kill him. Right. Like they betray it seems him. the most obvious yeah. plot yeah, point. Yeah, because he joins the, the and then old someone guard tries versus to kill the new guard. Yeah, and yeah. it was fine when they were in the trailer, you first saw them, but you didn't realize they were joining that team. Well, and he, the, they were joining him, or they were making a team for yeah, him to so lead. Yeah, so see, it made it seem like the the, for the first trailer that Marcus and uh, and Mike were gonna train these guys to be the new bad boys, which is why they were doing the theme and blah blah blah. Yeah. But now we, re- I realize when I'm watching, like, okay, so Marcus retired, he joins this team, finds out they're crooked, they try to kill him, unbeknownst to him that they find out that's the case. Yeah. One last time. Yeah. And then he comes back to help him. Yeah, that. yeah. Um, this one I was less excited. Like I, I really liked that first trailer. This one, mm. for those reasons, I was just like, oh, this is the whole movie. And well, I the don't first really one. So I still haven't like. Much. I watched half of the first one and it just stopped because like I don't know it's different. You but the one, first you trailer, one minute of a trailer. No, like of the movie. first movie. Oh, the movie. Like I'm gonna watch. Like you I, didn't finish the first I'm one. I'm gonna go back now because I actually want to watch it. Oh man! But the third one, like the first trailer, like was the essence of Bad Boys. Like what I thought Bad Boys was was that trailer. Like the but whole you, vibe. But you only watched the first half. But like of the just like one. my previous knowledge of knowing uh, what it was, like what mm-hmm. I assumed what it was. Want, what you want? And then the second one, yeah, it just seemed like a basic like action movie, and it just kind of seemed like. It like wasn't as are. impressive. It, was, and like it, funny it wasn't and like as beloved yeah. as yeah. the first one for sure. It had more quotes though. The second one, <laughs> <Yeah>. very quotable, hundred <laughs> percent quotable. Let's be honest though. I thought the second one was just as good as the first. I, I wouldn't say it's just as good. I still liked it. The yeah. first one, I really like. Like there's there's a grittiness to the first one because yes. it's the first one. They lightened up the mood for sure in the second. The second one was was to Michael Bay. Like it was. So the first one was Michael Bay, but like. Hey, Michael Bay can actually do some cool shit. The second one is like Michael Bay. I think has already done Wait, a Transformer movie. Is this a reference? No, he did them. Oh. He directed oh, yeah. like the third one too. Uh, I think he's I doing think the he's third on, one. Yeah. yeah. So then he became the Michael Bay that we know today, where it's like way too much, mm-hmm. like two to Michael Bay. How many like crashes doubled... do we have? Five. Okay. Triple. But it's that. a thirty-second ride to the grocery store. Yeah. Five. Five times. Now five. it's fifteen. Question me again. It's forty. <laughs> And I want a thousand fireworks coming out of everyone's asshole. So weird. Yeah. Too much? That would be weird. Yes, and? No, that's the end of the conversation. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's my theory for it. I think they gave a little too much away. I I think you're 100% right. Yeah, Yeah. no. You said that. It's like, okay, that's 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 pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. There's your movie, guys. (laughs) Little do we know if Celia actually wrote the script. (laughs) I wish. I hope not. Yeah. No. Um, well, so yeah, Bad Boys trailer. Got check, you know what I'm saying? That was whatever. It, at least it had like the, it, it had the color palette of a Bad Boys movie, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Like it, it, but the second one, not the first one, for sure. Um, and then we had Pixar's Soul, which is another Pixar movie a soul that's for a soul. going to uh, mm-hmm. rip our hearts out and throw it on the ground and yeah. make us cry. Um, this one, I don't, I didn't get it as much. I th- okay. did the guy die? I thought so too, but I wonder if we're just this. seeing no idea. both worlds. Like we're seeing like so his, his life, just like Inside Out was. Yeah, yeah. I still haven't seen Inside Out either. Oh I man, I haven't seen it either. Actually, to be oh, fair, man. Pixar right. movies. If I really yes, want and? to say ones I remember, Monster Inc. Like all oh, those cr- Finding yeah. Do- like Finding Nemo. Nemo. I know Bugs Life. I've seen as a kid. Toy Story, Cars, Up, and that's really it. Like yeah. offhand, I can remember like Pixar. Oh. I would I would highly recommend watching Inside Out. I do. Like, it seemed really like good. Mm. All the memes. You do what? You like, highly I wanna, recommend? No, I oh, want to okay, watch you do it. Like, yeah. watch it. I was like, I'm the one recommending. Like, I'm not avoiding it. Like, it. I do recommend it. Like, no, I did. Yeah, so it'll be interesting. I don't know what to make of it yet. Yeah, because because in the trailer they show the 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 main character falling through the manhole. So I thought yeah. he died, but then they show Just him Bruce after. Wayne falling. So. Don't worry, he'll get back up. Yeah, maybe. 
but I'll, or maybe he has a no, brush no. with death and he has to re- refine his like art like his yeah. whatever yeah, yeah like how pixar always does like they never really like rehash ideas no like how no, disney like really started off with like it. the cartoons and they like evolved and like pixar has just been like cartoons for life and that's what i like I who's doing it. that scooby-doo remake that you sent because that looks real good I have no idea, but it fuck. And they have Zac animation. E- they have Zach Efron as Fred. That yeah. and that's like a really good casting, honestly. Yeah. It's like just the animation alone, it mm-hmm. looks like what would happen if you took the like. It looks like the original cartoon, but just enhanced, like not changed, just an enhanced version. I just like a lot about this. Like they have Scoob, like that's the title, just Scoob with a, like exclamation mark. Scoob, mm-hmm. but like yeah, it just looks nice. Like Fred is the only one that looks weird because they like, modernized him. But okay. they didn't like modernize anybody else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just so like it looks weird. That's why it looks so. Because I didn't realize why either. But so it's being made. Let's see what company do they have? Atlas Entertainment, I believe, is the. Yeah. Does it have anything to do with the hotel? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe it was Travel Lodge Entertainment. I know everything ago. about my hotels. Oh no! Atlas Entertainment also produced all the DC movies, all the DCEU movies. Oh, it's a Warner Warner Brothers, oh, obviously, because yeah. fucking Scooby Doo. How did nobody here pick that up? I don't know. It's yeah, been, no, it's, it's been a while. Yeah, it's Warner Brothers. <laughs> yeah, but it looks good. Like, I'm not a big Scooby Doo fan, but like, I saw that. I'm like, that looks really clean. Like, I remember catching it once in a while. On TV. Yeah, no. But I don't know. Like, I'm actually really, really, like, nicely surprised. I mm-hmm. like that animation. And I was looking through comments. Like, I swear to God, if anybody complains about this, I'm going to smack the fuck out of them. This is a well, good. I haven't seen it yet. But it's still good. Like, Let you know, every. Man. No. You have to appreciate what you get once in a while. We like, do this appreciate it. Looks That's nice. why we complain because we have too much of it sometimes. That's fair. We live in a society. We, no, we, we live <laughs> a in a society, society of, of? Ex, of excess. Not it. And then? <laughs> and then. Um, well, and then I get to bitch about something right now. So oh, um, for some reason, it. so for some reason, Disney decided to submit everybody for the Oscars. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Like everybody. And clearly there's no lead in Endgame, so I get it. So, best supporting actor. They've they've just submitted this stuff. Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, Mark Ruffalo, Chris Everyone. Hemsworth, Jeremy Renner, Josh Brolin, Tom Paul Bond. Rudd, and Don Cheadle. Okay, Don Cheadle, good on you getting in there. He deserves. It. I'm not so roasting. I'm just saying. Didn't like, get snapped. No, Doctor Strange got snapped. Never mind. Yeah, because they well, whoever was not at the end. And then this is the this is where wait I'm wait gonna, wait what Doctor Strange got uh, nominated? Did you say no? He didn't. get Oh, nominated. I was gonna say what? The okay, fuck? so I didn't know who didn't get snapped away. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay, out of this list, none of them should be nominated for Oscars. Well, even Robert Downey Jr. himself said, "Yeah, let's not." Oh, that was yeah. the best best actor. Now, like, okay, this is like, okay, okay. So now they're throwing into the yeah. <laughs> we'll compromise. Now, <laughs> now let's 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 be real. They're just submitting it for consideration. They'll they'll for have sure. to pick from this, and they won't probably. I bet you they won't pick anybody. If I was going to pick anybody out of all this, it'd be Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, let's let's because that was the a, top three have a chance. Uh, uh, like Evans, honestly, though. Hemsworth I, like, and I, I think I think Hemsworth is the one that deserves it the most because or Paul Rudd even just for that scene when he finds that his daughter I was like not Renner snapped, though that was Renner beautiful. like oh yeah. he was one of my like from the start yeah. of the scene just overall like yeah. I just that like was a him. great opening yeah I don't think any of these though are even close to what Joaquin Phoenix did in Joker and the, but again that's he's but gonna he's be for best, best actor, actor yeah. yeah um yeah so maybe and that's there's no the supporting case. was so, there any I guess Murray maybe but like I wouldn't. No, yeah, I don't no. think there's any supporting. Actor so then, no, for... that was a false equivalent. Yeah. That was my bad. I'm sorry. Um, no, I would say the only person would be Hemsworth because the, he actually went to like, like a bunch of different emotional yeah. ranges. He he had the most going there. I don't know. I that's what I think. I think they made him anybody. too much of a joke character, and I just can't see it as like him Oscar. See, you're. I don't. Ah, man, I've only it's... seen it once. Maybe I'm just mis- yeah. misremembering it and like you thinking need to... like on the negative side of his character too much but see his character it was by far my favorite and he's my favorite thor of all of them because he is the most damaged character out of all of them yeah. and it make like i don't know i get super emotional when i watch him on screen because like i don't think it's a joke but just the way they portray like i know like not him but it's just the way everybody acted towards him and like well of course of what course else he was depressed do? but like it's just like they took him as a joke, and it's like it wasn't serious. Like, yeah. oh, whatever. Well, what they were no, they were just taking him as somebody that's not prepared or capable to mm-hmm. take this on, right? Yeah. That's why at the end, when he begged them, was like, "Please let me do something good for once," because yeah. he feels he blames himself for the whole thing. Anyways, this is the part where I'm gonna get super pissed off. I understand the Scarlett Johansson. Brie Larson get nominated. I just read over her name. Scarlett Johansson, Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> Hold on. Scarlett Johansson, Gwyneth Paltrow, Zoe Zaldana, Karen Gillian, and Brie. Larson. First of all, the only people that could e- should even be considered are Scarlett Johansson and Karen Gillan. 
Yeah. The only ones. Okay. But Brie, Gwyneth Paltrow was in it for maximum three minutes. Brie Larson was only in it for what? 35, 40 lines? I'd be mad. I'd be more fuck upset about right like, off. fucking what's her name? Pepper. Pepper, honest Paltrow. to God, doesn't give a fuck. She's, I guess, no, she has not memory issues. But like, she didn't do anything. I doesn't matter. Remember. Brie yeah. Larson was in it for but zero she time. Did something. She I don't care. Some, like, you know people. what else bothers me? Okay, so I was looking to get some, I wanted to get some Endgame posters or something like that. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of Endgame posters with Brie Larson front and center and the rest of the crew behind her. Do you, Oh my, <laughs> oh my god. Poster man. Oh my god. They have her in all like they have her prominent in all of these even the fucking cover of the DVD. She's in it for 3 minutes. Fuck off. Rocket was in it more. Replace her. Get her the fuck out of here. Fuck right off Marvel and your I don't know stupid, what you want us to do about this. Nothing. I yes wanna, and. Yes. I just want to fucking bitch about it cuz to put her in there she did nothing. Oh my god, I fucking hate it so much. I hate it so much. I think it's just stupid. And if anybody, Karen Gillan or Scarlett Johansson should be considered. But I mean, nobody should get considered, but if anybody. I think like Scarlett Johansson. Like, sure, for best supporting, honestly, like, I haven't seen a, like a bunch of like diverse movies. So her, I don't her know. Her and like, Nebula probably had the most screen time for the females. What did you say? And Karen Gillan had to if, play two roles. If I were to pick yeah. anybody, like, to give the, like, best supporting actor out of Endgame, I think, honestly, like, Scarlett Johansson would probably be the one I'd say is most deserving. Yeah. Because, like, her, the scene with her, like, just overall, she's in it the most. She probably had the most runtime, almost. Nope, Karen Gillan did. She did. I don't so, think so. Is Karen Gillan also Mantis, or am I just? No, 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 she's no, Nebula. Totally yeah, I know. I know she oh. was Nebula. Okay, no, thought, no, 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 okay. that's somebody else. Anyways, I thought Disney stop, stop making jokes of yourselves. Stop nominating people. Stop making it a thing. This is what happens when you know the the fans are like, no, like put some comic movies that we like if it fits the bill and if it's worth putting in. But now what they're doing is they're just throwing it out there just to force the consideration down it's like well now you've gone too far and you're ruining it this is what happens when something that has the potential to be good is now going to be sullied and everyone's going to be pissed off but hey at least it wasn't brie larson for captain marvel fuck I, that's a win fucking waste of a i spoke too soon just wait next week <laughs> um <laughs> best lead i just <laughs> it, it just you know what bothers me is that when somebody yeah, does brie larson bothers you no no, no. <laughs> <laughs> brie larson's captain marvel bothers sure, me sure, sure. because Marvel themselves is shoving her in everything Mm -hmm. and unwarranted like they're just putting her front and center and when I saw those posters like really nice posters and she's the lead I'm sorry no she's not no she's not stop it stop doing it Uh, the Witcher showrunner is says she says that the she has enough progression of the Witcher for seven seasons worth nice yeah which is good like how like it is they're not saying they make seven seasons, but like at new? least they have a plan. It's December. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> they have a plan set and like that's good to hear, right? Why what's uh, No, I, just, oh. I would love to do this month. Irishman's coming out soon. So yeah. did we talk with The Witcher being like more horror than fantasy last uh, week? no. No, but I, I that's, just came that's, up that's what they said, right? They're, they're yes. not gonna go too Which is like, fantasy. Interesting, because I don't know. I don't I'm just know. saying, like, I don't think that means it's gonna be like a horror like I don't I didn't expect that to mean that yeah. it's gonna be a horror series, but like to me, the they're fan- like fantasy- scary monsters, which I expect. Yeah. Like, that's what I'm thinking. Like the monsters are gonna be like scary as fuck. Which the designs would be good. are unbelievable. See, like that's what you said. So I think that would make sense for it to have be like they're... more scary. Yeah, I don't know. I'm surprised the diff- the fact that horror and fantasy they're separating. Like you're in a fantasy world, the fact that it's more on the line of horror doesn't matter. The fantasy's there no matter what. Mm-hmm. You have monsters, magic, witches, whatever, mm-hmm. witchers. They, like it's yeah. it's in the fantasy realm. The fact that you're it's horror based, mm-hmm. fine. I I don't see how they're saying oh it's more towards horror than fantasy. Like it is <coughs> fantasy. Sorry, in my opinion, that's that's why I look. Well, at it the could genre. be because like if you think about fantasy, like in my mind, it's like Lord of the Rings, where it's not horror, but it's just like it's a fantasy, yeah. right? It's just like in a random. It's a fun adventure. Yeah. yeah, like this could still be a fun adventure, mm-hmm. but it's gonna be like more serious and grounded and just shit like not grounded. Sure. But, like, and and Lord of the Rings wasn't really like again fantasy world, but very grounded in a lot of stuff. Like sure. they had its elements. They might be doing that. Yeah, you know, because Game of Thrones went super fantasy with the undead shit mm-hmm. and dragons and all that stuff, right? So yeah, and I, well, this one might be the same. It might be a blend of the two. I think yeah. I want to check out Witcher. Honestly, I've never played the games, but fuck it. Why oh not? man, I need some good shows to watch. I will, I will never not recommend it enough. Um, yeah, I will never not recommend it. I actually uh, pre-ordered the books, so I'm gonna read. How many the books? books are there? Uh, there's seven. 
Are they like yeah. Game of okay. Thrones big, or are they just like regular Harry Potter books? Some of them are shorter stories than others, um, but like luckily some guy on Reddit put them all in like the order because there's mm-hmm. a lot of different ones, and then they spawn off as they go. Yeah, so I'm super excited. Uh, anything else? I don't believe so. I don't got anything. No, I got anything. Okay. Yes, and yes, and and what? So anything else? Nope. And yes, no. no. That was it. Thank you, everybody, for uh, tuning in to another week of the F Word Podcast. The bed, po- the bed podcast. The best podcast you'll never know. Uh, I'm going to be recording uh, a deep dive on a gentleman by the name of Frank D'Angelo soon on I Sunday. I want to say something quickly. Oh, what? Please have a deep dive where you just bash Brie Larson No, I'm just get it all out of your system. No, no, no. I'll never know. I'll, you know what it is? The more you double down, the, the more, more the you hate, the more downs, like, the more I hate out. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, fair. Yeah. So the, the more stupidity that I see, unwarranted stuff like that, where they're just trying to make her a thing, the more pissed off I'm going to be. What we need to do? We need to find a guy who loves Brie Larson mm. and a deep dive between No, no, you listen. Two. I've said this before. I don't, she's I, a like, great actress. Just for debate. Just for not like personal, like not per, nothing personal. No, just, no, no. She's a great Brie actress. Brie Larson as Captain Marvel. Yes. Yeah. It's the Brie Larson, Captain Marvel blend that, that Kevin Feige is... Like going, bending on all, like going on all knees, on all fours right, to yeah. try to make a thing happen, and it's like it's not, mm-hmm. it's just not. Stop trying to make it happen. It's not exactly. going to happen. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So that's where my thing is because, again, I can watch some Brie Larson and other stuff, and I'm like, oh, she's a really good actress, mm-hmm. blah, 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 right? But anyways, where was I? You're ending. Oh, it. I'm doing a deep dive on um, a guy named Frank D'Angelo. Oh, he yes. is the Canadian Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> He's got a lot of albums out, and they're terrible so i have to listen to two of them to prep for it by vinyl uh not vinyl um vinyl no it is vinyl with uh sean from the story of you podcast that i was uh has yours come out yet oh yeah it came out a while ago i I shared it to the to the group um yeah so that's gonna happen i don't know when that's gonna come out i'll probably save it for a rainy day as in the day that we can't or a week we can't uh, Mm -hmm. record anything doesn't happen have, have to happen right away um Thank you again for listening for another week. Uh, very much appreciate it. Whether you're listening from the Stitchers, the Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever. If you're on Apple Podcasts, I think that's still the one where people are asking. Or does that exist anymore? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you do want to drop us a like or a comment on any of the streaming services that you're listening to us from, that would be very much appreciated. Um, if you have a review of a TV show, uh, uh, music, movie, whatever. Uh, just email us at the F4 podcast at gmail.com and let us know and we can read it on the show. Give you a shout out. I have one. There's a Gangstar album that came out last week that I was listening to and totally forgot to fucking mention it. And I haven't stopped listening to it. It's called One of the Best Yet from Gangstar. So very exciting. Very good. And is it one of the best yet? In this era of really shitty rap music, yes, it is unbelievable. Here so far this year... Uh, Rhapsody's Eve and Gangstar is one of the best yet is my favorite album. I've been listening to random rappers like Ludacris. Oh yeah, he's called Number One Spot with the Austin Powers oh, yeah. theme. Oh yeah, my yeah. god, I love that. I it was in the credits somewhere of a show and I'm like, oh, it's Austin Powers but it's a rap? Oh, it's think... such a good What movie? He's dropped off know. hardcore. I've been trying to think... new movie or like an old one? No, I was watching it. Like I was streaming oh, something dang. and it was in the credits. I'm, and I'm trying like, to think of what it is. Um, no, he's dropped off since word of mouth. Still one of his best albums. Um, what else I got? Yeah. So you can find me on Twitter at the F words G at the F words G. Make sure you're following and the F word on uh, Instagram, Facebook and the lazy Canadian on Instagram. That's all we got for this week. I'm G. I'm Anthony. I'm Vass. I don't care. Anymore. And we're out. <laughs>